now on Fixing the Money Thing. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons are in the church, friend. You've heard it. I've heard it. God does bad things. God allows it. Uh, we received this prayer request this week. I have been told I have an incurable disease that, and I will die a very painful death. But I know God is trying to teach me something. He has allowed this for my good. Please pray that I will learn what he is trying to teach me. Now, when I hear that kind of a request, there's two things I want to do. Number one, throw the computer across the room and scream. And number two, I want to find his pastor and scream. What are you teaching these people? God, God does that to people? God is good. He, this God does, you don't do that to your kids. I mean, God does not do that to teach people stuff, right? That is a doctrine of demons. It is to hold people back from receiving all the goodness of God. And friend, it is prevalent. Prevalent. We have to teach people the truth, who they are in Christ, the authority. Satan has no authority. He has no authority. The walls are down. He has no authority. Tell the demon to leave in the name of Jesus. If a lot of Christians believe they have to fast and pray and get kind of worked up emotionally to deal with devils, stop it. Just say, get in Jesus' name. You have the keys. He is a liar. He is going to try to suck the life out. He is only bluffing. He has no authority. But you must step up. So you have the power to cast out demons. Number two, we're going to talk about, they do speak in tongues. Number three, they have the power to pick up snakes with, the, he, he emphasizes with their hands. Hands is the transference of authority. If you talk about laying on of hands, laying hands on people, Paul laid hands on people he was sending off into, into ministry. Laying on of hands is a transference of authority. He's saying you have the authority to deal with Satan hands on. You're going to wade right into his territory and you're going to deal with that situation by faith in the name of Jesus. He can't harm you, right? You have the right to drink deadly poison. No one's going to drink deadly poison on purpose. This is talking about the hidden snares and tactics the enemy is setting for your life, but it shall not harm you. It has no authority over you. The devil's a liar. You have the authority. You must understand the walls are down. Drinking deadly poison shall not harm you. And I'll tell you why here in just a minute. They lay hands. Again, there's that authority of the kingdom. They lay hands on sick people and they will recover. That's you, the church. Now that paragraph in Mark 16 is talking about what? Why, let me ask you this. Number two, they speak in tongues. Why is that listed there? I mean, think about it. There's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, correct? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Why is that one listed in that paragraph? Why wasn't it, uh, you know, miracles or gifts of healing or whatever? Why did he mention speaking, they speak in tongues? Because if you read the paragraph, that entire paragraph is about invading Satan's territory. Why? Because you need to hear. When you're in battle, you need to have a good line of communication with the, uh, the commander the one who sees the whole battle. You're down there in a trench, you're down there on a hillside, but someone knows the location of all the enemy troops, where their artillery is, everything happening, and you need to receive directions on what to avoid and what to take in a battle. Right. Satan dwells in darkness. God's the kingdom of light. God knows exactly what's happening, all the snares and tactics and what needs to be taken. You need to hear. You need to hear in battle, and because you're in a warfare, it can't be a, it, it has to be a coded message. Are you follow me? Even in military battles, they use coded messages communicating the battle plans in a battle to their commanders. It has to be coded lest the enemy understand it and anticipate the attack. Tongues is a language you don't know. If you're new to this, just hang on. It gets better. Better than any James Bond movie you've ever seen. <laughs> God has developed a way to download to his army, the church, on assignment, his plans and his warnings and his, this tactic and this supernatural strategy. It's called praying in the spirit. Now, I'm not, I don't have time to discuss all the book of Acts, the day of Pentecost, all of that, but I do want to bring up this point because people point it out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
verse 27, Paul says, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it and God has placed in the church, circle that. Now you have to understand this letter Paul is writing. He's writing to a church, a baby, baby church, just newly born, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they're all speaking in tongues at the same time. There's chaos in the church. Uh, if you continue reading the book of, of Corinthians, you'll find they're arguing on who has the most spiritual gifts, who's the greatest. The whole thing's out of whack, and Paul is sending a letter to kind of bring order to this church. All right, so he says this. In the church, first of all, there's apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of healings, helps, guidance, administrations that would say different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? The answer is no. Are all prophets? Of course not. Are all teachers? No. Do all work miracles? Of course not. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. Well, what's the greater gifts? We have to find out what's going on. What's the greater gifts? He did say that everyone doesn't speak in tongues, didn't he? Yep, he did. But he said in the church, now, to bring clarity to this, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. Paul says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you, but in the church, I would rather speak five words of uh, intelligent words, intelligible words, to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. So basically, this posture this. Paul is talking to a group of people that are all speaking in tongues at once, and they're all happy about it. They're all bragging about it. He's, hey, stop it. I pray in tongues and more all you guys. Why would Paul say he's glad he speaks in tongues more than all of them? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 through 5. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter what? Mysteries by the Spirit of God. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. The word edify means bring instruction. What is the first thing that our aircraft do entering into a battle? We knock out what? Communication. The communications. Satan has to dishonor, bring all kinds of judgment against the communication system called praying in the spirit, lest his people pick up on tactics and do damage to his kingdom. He has brought this doctrine into the church that it's passed away, it's of the devil. Friend, it is not... It is for the devil. <laughs> if you follow the book, uh, Pentecost and the book of Acts, every believer, we just saw in our Mark 16 chapter, uh, that every believer speaks in tongues, has the right to speak in tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I had a dream a couple weeks ago, uh, another dream. In this dream, I, I saw a tractor, a big, just regular farm tractor, and there's this very steep hill, really almost, you'd have to say, impossible to climb this hill. The newspapers and TV crews were all there to watch this tractor try to get up this hill, and their verdict was totally impossible. This is not going to happen. But in my dream, I saw on this tractor, on the axle, the big wheel axle, was this big lever. This lever would make small adjustments in the transmission and the, the function of the tractor to allow it to adjust as it climbed this, this mountain. But here's the key. Everyone could see the mountain, the impossibility, and the tractor. But guess what? The newspapers and everyone else could not see the lever. And so what's the lever, friend? It's the Holy Spirit. You've got the advantage of the lever. You've got the advantage of this speaking in tongues, praying in the Spirit. This lever was our advantage. Listen, friend, God has your answer. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.